Concurrency and parallelism are techniques which are heavily used nowadays. Whether it's inside of backend development or finance, knowing how to take advantage of those techniques can lead you to a better programmer and will allow you to write much more efficient and better software. This video aims to teach you all what you need in order to start using those techniques. Let's make a program which is not going to use concurrent execution or parallel execution. First, our program is going to be quite simple. We will iterate over those URLs and send a GET request to each one. Then we can measure the time and see the differences between how much time it took for us before using threads and multiprocessing and after using those methods. Let's start making our function. We will call it HTTP and we will accept a DNS as a parameter. And now we should use try and accept. It is always recommended. Accept exception SE as error. And then we will print the error in case there is any. And now we will start making our get request. I will specify the DNS and I am going to print the response status code. And before that, also the response URL. Response URL. And to me, it seems like we are quite ready. Now I will iterate over those URLs and then I will call our function per each URL. So for URL in URLs and let's call our function and send a URL as a parameter. Before that, I will do start time. And we will call the time method on the time object. And later I will do this and time. And then I will also call it again. And I will make a variable which is called total time. And now we can do end time minus start time. And this variable will give us the total time the whole operation took from the start to finish. So now I can print it. Total time it took without threading or multi-processing is, and we can output our variable. Those are the URLs and let's execute our code. As you can see, take a look at the output. Each URL is waiting to be completed before moving to the second URL. And the total time it took for us is 11 seconds. Now we can use threading in order to see the differences. Let's make a thread variable. I will increase the screen a bit first of all. Okay. Now we should use the thread keyword which we got from our library, from the threading library. And here we should use target in order to specify our function. We should use target. It allows us to choose what function we want to run, which in our case is the HTTP function. And then we should use ax. It stands for arguments. So we should specify the DNS we are looking to send. Okay. And now doing this line alone by itself is not enough. We should start each thread. So we should call thread.start. And here we should make an empty list, which will hold all the threads. And let's append each thread to this list. So threads, and we should call the append method and append each thread. Let's iterate over our threads array. So I should do for thread in threads. And now I should call the join method on each thread. It makes sure that each thread is finished before that we are moving to the rest of our code, which is here. Now I will change our print statement to this. So Total time it took. Now we are using threading. So I will remove it. I will modify it a bit. So total time it took with threading is. 
and now let's see the results. Before that, it took for us uh, 11 seconds, so let's comment it. The time it took before using the reds is 11 seconds. And now let's see the time it takes with the reds. So take a look. Before it took us 11 seconds and now it doesn't even take us 2 seconds. So as you can see, the differences are insane. You might ask yourself what just happened? I mean, how did we manage to reduce the time from 11 seconds to not even 2 seconds? Well, here comes the magic of the reading. When we use concurrent execution or so-called threading, it means that we can run our program in a much more efficient way. When we don't use threading, we are sending a GET request for each URL and then we are waiting for it to get a response and so on and so on. And that's the exact process for each URL you are currently seeing here. But the case is with threading, we don't have to wait the entire time it takes for each URL to get a response. We are not compelled to do it. By the time it takes for Google to give us a response, we can move and send a GET request to the second URL. And that's what is happening here. Because that it takes so quick to run our code, there can be a false impression of claiming that each URL is running independently and is getting its request at the same time. But this is a twisted perspective and it is not necessarily true. Because that there is a thing which is called the GIL in Python. And when we use threading, we are not sending a GET request to each URL at the same time. But as I said before, by the time it takes for one URL to get a response, we can move to the other one. If we do want to send a GET request to each URL at the same time, we can use multiprocessing. So it will spawn each process and each process is going to have its own memory space and resources and each process is not going to be dependent on the other one. So when we use multiprocessing, each process is running independently and you can claim that all URLs are getting their requests at the same time. So now let's run it with multiprocessing. Okay. Now I will nest the whole code under it. This line is required for using multiprocessing. Make sure to put everything under it. And now we can start running our code. And as you can see, currently we are using multiprocessing and that's our time. Always make sure to use this line when using multiprocessing. It prevents bugs and I'm quite sure that you cannot even use multiprocessing without this line. So you should use it by default, which is good. So let's try to run it. And as you can see, it requires us to use this. In our case, our threads do not share any state between each other. But there are some special cases where we need to share a state between each thread. And then in order to do it in a safe way, we should use what is called mutexes. So I am going to show it now. Let's make a variable which is going to get called number. The initial value is going to be zero. And then I will make a list which is going to store our results. I will declare it as an empty list. And now let's make each thread append its result into this list. And also increment this number variable, which is going to represent each iteration. So first of all, let's increment the number. So I can do number and increment it by one. And then let's append 
our results into our list. Results and let's append our object and the values we are looking to send into our list are those. The first one is going to be an index which is going to represent each iteration. The value is going to be a number and then the second uh, value is going to be the URL. So let's specify the response response dot url okay and the third one is going to be the status code why not status and here i will call the status code method over our response so response dot status code and now it is quite okay but it's not enough yet we should use mutexes and we should import the lock keyword we should define it here it makes sure that each thread can access our data at a time. So only one single thread can access our data at a single time. And then it prevents a collision where all threads are trying to access our data at the same time. It can lead to a lot of problems. And that's why it is recommended to use mutexes in order to prevent any future issues. Okay, but it is not enough. We should use the variable here and then nest our encode inside of it. And it makes sure that our encode is safe. We should nest it as well, sorry. And now it is quite good. And let's iterate over our results to take a look at our list. So for result in results and I will print each result. Let's take a look at it now. And as you can see, we can see our results. Take a look at our API. Imagine that we have a function which is doing background tasks. So let's try to simulate it. I can declare it here, def background tasks. It will take a title, for example. And let's simulate that it is doing a certain work while true, it will increment a number by one. So I will declare a number here. While true, number is going to get incremented by one each time. And I will use try and accept. Okay, I will go here, accept, exception s e. And I will print there or in case there is any. First of all, we should call our function, of course. I will call our function and I will specify our title as a parameter. We can just print the title, why not? And I am going to call it now. So as you can see, let's try to access any of the routes. The get request route is working as expected. But the moment I am going to create a new entity via a post request, take a look at what happens. We cannot even access any of our routes. And it is because that this function is running on the background. I will even print the number so that you can see it. Let's run it again. And this chunk of code is blocking the whole API. So we cannot have this background uh, task running and at the same time serve our API. So it causes a bottleneck, a problem. So in order to solve it, we can use the reading. So let's convert it from a normal function to a threaded function. We should call the thread keyword and that's the exact same method as before. We should specify a target, which in our case is the background tasks function. Oh, my bad. I will just copy this one. And now we should specify arguments, which are the parameters as well. Okay, I can comment this. And all what we have to do here, since it's only a single thread, is to do thread and call the start method on it. And it is all what it takes. We are ready now. We can execute our background task. 
and at the same time we can also access other routes as well. As you can see, our background task is currently running.